the space shuttle goes up again in about two weeks. Our story is about the building of that magnificent machine. It started out costing $5 billion. It ended up costing $10 billion. And NASA and the FBI are now investigating that cost overrun. Did the contractor, Rockwell International, illegally heap costs onto the space shuttle contract? Did the nation's space shuttle become one company's money shuttle? The successful voyage of Columbia was without doubt a great and proud moment for America, a triumph of vision and technology, a sight to excite the patriotism of every citizen. The contract to build it excited some other less lovely emotions. The shuttle was built mostly by Rockwell International in California, a private company, but one that depends for almost half of its business on government contracts for defense and space. The enormous cost overrun of the shuttle, which is now double the original budget, is partly due to inflation. But Brian Hyland, the Deputy Inspector General of NASA, feels it is also partly due to mischarging by Rockwell, even fraud. It begins with the attitude of the company when it gets a multi-billion dollar contract. Once they have that contract, they're no longer in a competitive situation as such, so there's really no constraints on them to hold costs down. But in a case like Rockwell's, can the auditors hope to find the real amount of mischarging that went on? No, and we never contend that we can. But we try to get an idea as to the total amount involved, but we're never going to say this is all of it. Uh, it just can't be done. While Rockwell was building the shuttle for NASA, it was also working on certain Air Force contracts. The contract to build the shuttle was a cost-plus contract. That is, the company takes a certain profit over and above what the job costs. If there's a cost overrun, NASA and the taxpayers absorb that. The company still gets its profit. The Air Force contracts were fixed price contracts that do not allow for cost overruns. NASA and the FBI are investigating to see if Rockwell employees were ordered to work on Air Force contracts, but to mischarge the time they spent on those jobs to the shuttle contract, in effect guaranteeing that Rockwell would not lose money on the fixed price contract by charging off the labor to the juicy shuttle contract. In essence, the government is investigating to see if Rockwell was robbing Peter to pay Paul. And what's more, if the company was robbing Peter and Paul. If something is going to cost the company a hundred million dollars mm -hmm. to make, how much will they bid? Well, hopefully a hundred million plus what they consider to be a fair profit. You say hopefully, but in fact in the real world, how does it work? In the real world, I think uh, you're going to find that they'll come in with maybe anything 60 to 70 million as being their cost. And that's to uh, gain uh, an advantage perhaps over their competitors and to get the contract. And then many of them will try to make well on change orders. What does that phrase get well or make well mean exactly? Well, to recoup the costs that they didn't come up front with when they made the original proposal. How do they do that? Some of them call it accounting aberrations. Some of them call it uh, just uh, errors. Uh, I think it comes down to basically uh, mischarging. The story begins with one man who blew the whistle. His name is Ray Senna. Senna worked for Rockwell for 24 years. His evaluation reports over the years were excellent, and he rose to the position of manager of a department at Rockwell's Aerospace Division in Downey, California. In the summer of 1977, he went on medical leave, an operation for an ear infection. I had been on medical, and I had walked in that day, and my staff told me that they had been directed to mischarge out in the shops. Mischarge from what to what? In other words, they were being directed to mischarge on the space shuttle contract where there was also Air Force work being done out in the shop. So you were told to charge work that you were doing on an Air Force project and charge it to the shuttle. That's right, and also to charge one spacecraft to another, like the 102 to the 103, to high cost overruns. Was it common knowledge? Did people talk about this in the shop? Yes, it was common knowledge among, among the managers. What had happened before, Morley, was that the DCAA, the Department Contract Audit Agency, had caught them already mischarging. Defense. In Contract Audit Agency. Mm -hmm. Had caught them already mischarging in some of the other departments. 
not only Ray Senna and the Defense Contract Audit Agency were concerned, but NASA itself about possible criminality. Brian Hyland of NASA wrote to the Justice Department back in late 79, urging that Rockwell be prosecuted. This is the third instance, he wrote, where the corporation was found to be mischarging from an Air Force fixed price contract to a NASA cost plus contract for the space shuttle. I think management's failure to institute proper internal control reflects on their intent or motivation, especially when the corporation is an international conglomerate having access to the best accountants and auditors in the country. Ray Senna reported the mischarging to Rockwell corporate officials. They told me they were going to look into it. And, uh, and after that, when I came back down, uh, my boss, Joe Casapoli, called me upstairs and told me I was disloyal and that I wasn't part of the team anymore, and they started to take away my responsibilities. Several other longtime Rockwell employees say they were ordered to mischarge. Joe Garcia says he was ordered to mischarge his labor from one Air Force contract to another. Del Arias and Anita Tovar say their bosses told them to charge off time they worked on an Air Force job to the space shuttle. You say you were all three told to mischarge. At the time, I was my uh, manager, Ron Seattle. Who told you to mischarge? Oh, Ron Seattle, my manager did. <clears throat> Anita, who told you? Um, Dell told me to mischarge. You told her to mischarge? Yes, I did. I was directed to have her mischarge her time charges also. Dell would just hand me um, a card, an index card with the account numbers on there. But I knew that um, I had heard Ron Seattle instruct him you know, to, to mischarge, yeah, to charge to the shuttle. If this was going on in such a, a wholesale way, surely someone would catch it. Weren't there timekeepers? They never caught it. There, we had audit teams come in there, but we were always warned in advance when they were coming through, and we would just adjust the work to the time charges that we were using. Who, who would uh, warn you? Uh, it normally came from our management, our upper management. And what, what would they say? Just well, they'd tell us that there was an auditor coming through. It was either company or DCAS, an auditor coming through. It's and defense uh -huh. auditors. Right. So we'd just adjust to work. Brian Hyland of NASA was deeply concerned about what was going on at Rockwell. In his letter to the Justice Department, he warned that subtle mischarging could be accomplished by having the supervisor fill out the time cards directly with erroneous or falsified data. This type of activity could only be detected by floor checks or walkthroughs by the auditors. Even then, it would not be possible to measure the full extent. This appears to be the method used by Rockwell. Almost two years after Senna first reported the mischarging to Rockwell, he went to NASA with his allegations. That was June 5th, 1979. On June 6th, he was suspended by Rockwell, and on June 22nd, he was fired. After Ray Senna went to the NASA Inspector General, an investigation began. Arias, Garcia, and Tovar were questioned. All told NASA they had mischarged. Tovar soon left on medical leave, unrelated to the mischarging. Arias and Garcia soon found themselves suspended. Arias and Garcia are back at work, but have been demoted. They're suing Rockwell. Ray Senna is suing Rockwell for wrongful discharge. They've hired Melvin Belli's law firm. Two of the lawyers working on the cases are Monica Jimenez and Fred Sayer. Rockwell won't be interviewed by us uh, in this program, but they did write us a letter in response to our query, and they say, and I quote, in no way would we tolerate or condone actions contrary to our established policy of accounting, integrity, and cost effectiveness. It's regrettable that the reputation of Rockwell and thousands of its dedicated employees who worked so hard to make the space shuttle a success and a source of great national pride is being challenged by these allegations. Okay, maybe something wrong was going on in one small corner of a very large company, but no company can control that. If, in fact, some substantial portion or even a small portion was mischarged, it took more than some little fellow off in one corner of the company to get rid of that much money. And I believe that uh, when we get a chance to put, put our proof before a jury, 
uh, we will be able to show that this was a conscious plan throughout the company, not just in one small corner, and that the people involved in it were upper level management of the highest order. Could it just be an honest error, do you think? I don't think so. It seems that these errors all go, or the great percentage go, to the benefit of the company and against NASA. If they were errors, you would expect them to go both ways. As far as you can determine, is there any benefit, does any benefit accrue to a person at the level of Del Arias or Garcia for mischarging? I can't see any. What benefit is it to people higher up in Rockwell to have mischarging going on? To individual benefit. We know the company benefits, mm -hmm. but to an individual. All right, I think it's a, a question, number one, of maintaining their job. Number two, uh, showing a good job performance which results in uh, bonuses and some of the other corporate perks that go along with it. Here's the system that they use with NASA. If NASA catches them, when I go and show them where they were mischarging in one area, and it's, say, 60000 then they come back and, and compensate NASA with the 60000 back, and they take it off the records. Is that the penalty, pretty much? The charge is disallowed, and they just pay it back? That's generally what the pattern has been. And uh, we, in the IG's office, feel that uh, that's somewhat uh, analogous to a, a bank robber getting caught until the old bank robber put the money back in the till. There's no penalty involved with that type of thing. If a company feels that they're going to be prosecuted for wrongdoing, we feel that there's going to be less chance of it happening. But at the moment, they only de there is no deterrent, in no. effect. No. That if you get a government contract, you can do what you please, and if you're caught, they don't even slap your wrist. They That's just right. say, give us the money back. That's right. If it was you and I that were doing it, we'd go to jail tomorrow. Four months after Senna was fired, the NASA Deputy Administrator, Alan Lovelace, warned the chairman of Rockwell, Robert Anderson, about Rockwell's attitude. The NASA Inspector General has informed me, he wrote, of some activities on the part of Rockwell International which have disturbed me very much. They reflect an attitude towards cost that we should not tolerate. The activities he was referring to were loading costs onto the shuttle contract and phony and inflated travel expenses by Rockwell employees that were also heaped onto the shuttle contract. As an example... Moonraker? What do you know about Moonraker? What I read in the newspaper, son. The James Bond movie Moonraker. Rockwell's vice president for communication and her assistants flew to London on the Concorde to look over the film studios and then on to Paris to see the movie. That seven-day trip, costing thousands, was charged to the shuttle. When it was discovered by NASA, it was disallowed. The girlfriend of a Rockwell vice president and her two dogs were flown back and forth across the country twice and charged to the shuttle. In all, NASA is trying to disallow about a million and a half dollars in travel expenses. But as NASA says, no one knows just how much more may have fallen through the cracks. As for the mischarging, that is still under investigation by NASA, the Justice Department, and the FBI. The matter is now before a federal grand jury in Los Angeles, but no one's predicting if there'll be any indictments, who will be named, how high it might go in Rockwell, and how much money is involved. It is near impossible to know exactly what part of the billions in overrun can be attributed to mischarging. Rockwell admits to only about $60,000. Others say it could run into many, many millions, a fairly wide gap. Whatever the figure might be, there's another financial matter, and that is Rockwell's legal fees, both in the civil suits in connection with the shuttle and in any criminal investigation. Who pays those legal fees? Right now, unfortunately, uh, the agency pays for them, and uh, then it trickles down to the taxpayer. The possibility and even the likelihood is if Rockwell is found guilty of gross violations, we are going to pay their legal fees. That's the way it is right now. They can go and get the best attorney's money can buy because of this arrangement. One of the reasons we, the IG, recommend that there be criminal prosecution is that once there is an indictment even, then we can make moves, an agency can, to debar or suspend the company. And I think that's where we will 
get their attention. If they're not going to get any future business, then I think they'll try to play it straight. And to a Rockwell, no future government business means what? About half their business, huh? A lot of money, yes. A lot of money, too, was what the government spent on Rockwell's legal fees. For the Space Division alone last year, it was $422,000. For Rockwell, the best lawyers that most of that money bought was the firm of Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, the former law firm of Attorney General William French Smith. As for other government business, in January, Rockwell was awarded a $2.2 billion contract to build the B-1 bomber. And that's just the first phase. <laughs>